Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Radio Show will air live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Rennie Kanaw for ChampionshipBBQ.TV, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure you say whatever? We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the really big Barbecue Central show. The show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling, broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. Rapidly becoming known as the barbecue capital of the, pro, uh, of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening live fire outdoor cooking and grilling show. Two ways to get in touch with me if you want to. 877-448-0433 Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com uh, Mike, not technical difficulties that I shave. Like a baby. Like a baby. Here's what's happening on the show tonight. In case you didn't get the newsletter, go ahead and jump over to the website. Be sure to take advantage of that, thebbqcentralshow.com. You can find out anything else you want to about the show uh, from that website as well. Coming up in about 13 minutes from now, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, will be joining me for not only the second but the third segment. So two segments with the good doctor checking in. And then in the second hour, Mike Peters, pitmaster of Here Piggy Piggy, and the uh, host, is it host or director, creator? of the Great American Barbecue Tour. So we'll be doing a lot of talking on that. Uh, some competition talk as well. That's Mike Peters at 1014, 1035. The bullpen segment, as we call it, uh, Derek Riches from About.com will be joining me. Uh, we're going to be going over some new products that are going to be hitting the market, uh, some items of note that he's looking to cover. So that's what you have. It's a wonderful, it's live, local, and late-breaking. 877-448-0433, Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com are the two ways to get in touch with me. All right, look, if you're watching the show right now, blast off an email to all of your friends and neighbors. Uh, go ahead and make that Facebook post or tweet it out that you're watching the show. You can get the live video feed, outdoorcookingchannel.com. You can also get audio only by visiting the BBQ Central Show dot com. You can stream it on your smartphones and don't forget we're streaming live on roku so if you have roku go and download the outdoor cooking channel app and then that very first option that you have to select the live streaming option choose that and you can see me in live glorious 720 by 480 it's absolutely fabulous all right so let me see if i can get this going here you would recall over the last couple of weeks it's been nothing but terror and technical difficulty like three weeks ago we were talking Shit, it was probably four weeks ago now that if uh, my memory is serving me correctly. We were talking with Derek Riches, and we were talking about this thing called the grill bot. And then I said, hey, you know, he made reference that maybe it's a Father's Day gimmick or whatever the case may be. And then we tried it. What seems like now seven or eight months in the making... I said, hey, why not? Let's do this again. See if we can't finally get this bad bitch in the can. We welcome back to the show. Bill Rempe, my dad. Papa, are you there, Papa? Uh-oh. Oh, sorry, Greg. Hello. Hey, hey. Great to be back. All right. Now I can't hear you. What? I can barely hear you now. I can hear you fine. 
I know I can barely hear you. Can you hear me? Barely. Barely. I I, uh, I can hear you well, so let me just do it, and you can just uh, keep quiet. All right. Well, what I'm trying to figure out exactly why uh, why I can't hear you. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, okay, hold on one second. Um, um, I've got all my plugs in. I'm gonna go underneath. I went underneath to try and dump the sound in somewhere else. Let me try okay. this. Let me try this instead. I'm going to go to options. Go on audio. See if that helps anything. Go ahead. Oh, no, really do it. No, really do it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, hello? hello? All right. So that hello? actually sounds better. Freaking. All right, so here's the bottom line. So we have you now. Uh, I'm, you're in glorious Skype video, which you really can't see. Uh, you can see me. You can actually see a, a shot that nobody else can see of me, which is kind of fun in itself. Uh, okay. But so was it like three or four months ago we were talking, or we had attempted to talk about this thing called the Grill Bot. And yeah, it, was like it the, had a different name then. I think it was called the, I think it was called the Barbecue uh Botanamon or the, something like that. The Roomba that, you know. for your grill. The, yeah. So yeah, it was it yeah. But the this, grill bot. This is an item that you are going to be putting on a grill after yeah. well, I guess. You know, I was thinking it's after you cook, but it could be, I guess, previous to you cooking, whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm a preheat your grill guy, uh, do the grill brush thing, and then I also do a burn off after the fact. That's what I live right. by. But so let's say, you know, whether it's after the fact or uh, before you do a new cooking session, you would place this item on your grill and it uh, scoots around in a uh, in a very dubious way. Look at that shirt right off the bat. That's a you can't you can't really get that shirt anymore either. Wow. But that well, and, a little, little, little grit central eye dap there. That yeah. is not a uh, against the law shirt either. So we're not breaking any rules. Oh, good. So, you know, what do you think about this Roomba? You've had at least three or four months to uh, review it on several occasions and come up with talking points on it. Overall, what do you think of it? I I can't recommend it highly enough. You can't recommend it highly enough? I cannot. I, 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 I cannot. You, you uh, can't recommend it at all, you mean? Or highly enough. You see, the problem, and I've tried to articulate this the past, uh, I don't know, two or three times, four or five times that I've been uh, on the show, is that, uh, it, you know, conceptually, it's kind of kind of, kind of neat. You, you put this thing on your grill, yeah. you punch the button, it rolls around on the top of your grill like those uh, vacuum cleaner things that bump around your house yeah. and the you know, ruin all the floorboards. Right. Uh, but but here's, here's my issue, and, and it has been you know, from the start, and it's probably my own issue, is that I, I know, I absolutely know that when I'm, that thing is done, and I've got the grill closed up for the night, the next night when I go out there to fire up the old Weber to cook them burgers, uh, that old grill bot's going to be out there, and I'm going to have grill bot fricassee the next morning. It's grill, just going to be, you know, grill, one of those things. Grill bot fricassee? Yeah. Let me let me show you what I, I uh my, my my weapon of choice is right. you, you you probably recognize this you bought this yeah for me. that's the grill daddy this, this is the, this is the grill daddy and this this is this this applies itself beautifully to the care and, and cleaning of, of of gas grills in my case gas grills uh, because what you do is to your point you you fire up the grill after you take the meat in the house and you're you know getting ready to you know car, carve the carve the meat and <clears throat> you do a burn off and then you go out and you have this little rascal here with the water in here and the brush here you scrape it off and and my grills have always been sparkling clean the other thing i've been very successful with is handing this thing here to your mother have her go out and do it all of that and this is the part she uses on me when i do that so hey there you go so i mean overall uh, we're having a little fun at the grill bot's expense and yeah. keeping praise on previous Father's Day guests, uh, Derek Riches, who's actually going to be on the show again tonight, so it's obviously been a month since we talked about it, uh, <laughs> made a statement that this might be a Father's Day gimmick push and that after Father's Day you might never see it again. 
I'm just getting some instant chat feedback saying that this grill bot was actually featured on the Today Show. So maybe there is something to the fact that they're trying to make a media push for Father's Day and then, you know, they'll make their hundreds of thousands of dollars. You'll never be able to see it again because at last check, you couldn't even buy replacement brushes for it. Well, you know, that's interesting, the Today Show. I've never heard of that show, but uh, I'm, I'm sure Very that's probably an NBC it's probably an NBC show, and that's why I haven't heard of it. But uh, you know, I, I, you know, maybe maybe it is, maybe it's not. I, I have to be fair, and you know, you you invite me on here to give my opinion, and it's always going to be uninformed and, and always uneducated. It's it could be a great device. I haven't used it. Uh, I just I just from my standpoint, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit cautious because. By the way, how much does this thing cost? Uh, well, there's two models. You have the $70 model, and then the $100 model does come with the audible alarm, I guess. Oh, well, audible alarm. Yeah. Does it have lights? No. Oh, then, then, then the hell with it. But the, you know, for me, I, I would say, you know, it, it, it could be worth a try, um, but for a Father's Day gift, I'd rather have another shirt. Yeah, and you can't, like I said, collector's up. Can't get that shirt anywhere. That, sh- that shirt could be worth 70 or or $100, depending on which central light you're trying to sell it to on the chat room. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, good enough. I'll, I'll take all offers. All, all right. All offers. Well, good enough. All right, so uh, this is my dad, Bill Rempe. You can see his wife appearing on the show monthly, giving uh, great recipes, Connie's Recipe Corner. Uh, dad finally got it done. Uh, appreciate the time, and uh, we will talk to you soon. And my wife is always better. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. There Love is. you. Love you, too. That's my dad right there. <laughs> Bringing it strong on the grill bot talk. Bringing it strong! Finally able to hook that up. I wonder if I have an audio... <sighs> Hold on a second. Ray, just chill out just for one second. I want to get into my playback stuff here. Communications do nothing. Damn it. Recording. Communications. Do nothing. All right. Well, I got all that set up right. That piped in like crap, I'm telling you. Piped in like crap. All right. Folks, I want to uh, tell you. Where did it go? Here we go. I want to take this time to welcome in a new partner to the show. He's a big-time competitor, a custom pit maker, someone who has been on the show a few times as well. Proud to say that JP Custom Smoke is now on board with the Barbecue Central show. That's right, folks, uh, JP Custom Smoke. Uh, I'm happy to have John in the partnership stable, Central Lights. You are the ones who are going to benefit the most. Uh, John has some of the most sought-after rubs on the market today, really. When you think about it, uh, Barbecue Central has some of the biggest hitters in the rub market all right here. Your one-stop shop show, so to speak. Here's what you can choose from. JP's Sweet Heat Chicken Rub, JP's Custom Blend for Pork, and, of course, the brand new to the market, JP Custom Smoke Beef Rub, already helping teams win for those beef categories during KCBS contests. Can't wait to get your hands on these flavors. Look, I understand. Hit up JP, like John Patty, jpcustomsmoke.com. And get yourself some. Pick some up for your barbecue buddies as well for gifts or other such revelry. They'll be thanking you early and often. You know, in 2009, J.P. Custom Smoke was the KCBS Team of the Year in pork ribs. Finished second in the pork category. In tw- and then in 2011, they won the American Royal pork category. Followed it up with another pork category win the following year. So not only is this stuff really good with the finest ingredients... It's winning on the competition circuit as well. Once again, that website, jpcustomsmoke.com. Get yours right now. We'll be giving away some JP Custom Smoke in between the Dr. Barbecue segments coming up. Get ready for that. And check this out. Not only does JP Custom Smoke make great rubs, John also does custom barbecue pits. Gang, I've seen him in person. Jambo gets a lot of run for being tops in the industry. But you might want to hit John's site up right now if you're eyeballing a Jambo, see what he can do for you. I mean, look at that pit that you see right there if you're watching on the video side. It's unreal. Craftsmanship second to none, the paint, the customization ability, the firebox door. Bottom line, folks, JP Custom Smoke Pits are worth the look at the very least. Lastly, John promoting an upcoming barbecue competition. It's called the R-Kansas, like the letter R, Kansas City State Barbecue Championship. 
This is going to be in Arkansas City, Kansas, April 26th and 27th. It's a state qualifier. It's also part of that Tornado Alley Pitmasters Championship Challenge Series. So here's what you want to do. Contact Ronnie Dornhofer with your interest. There's a website, ARC, A-R-K, ARCCityBBQ.net. That's ARCCityBBQ.net. Or you can call Ronnie at 620-441-7693. 620-441-7693. Or Ronnie underscore Dornhofer at Cox.net. You can also get that contact information on the KCBS website. Uh, Stick around. We will be right back with Dr. Barbecue, Ray Lamp. Always a fun time. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Networks. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, we are back. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. If you want to jump in tonight, thanks to my dad for coming on last segment. All right. We got to get ready for this. Well, today, I think the only guy that has one of these. So uh, let's get ahead and do this. The only man with his uh, theme song. Meathead wrote his own theme song, but I don't know if, you know, writing your own theme song qualifies you as getting a theme song here on the show. Uh, Ray Lampy joining us here. Ray, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Greg. He wrote his own theme song? <laughs> yeah, he uh, he paid, he wrote and paid a uh, very talented lady to sing You Can't Hurry Ribs. Have you heard of the uh, song Sweeping the Nation, You Can't Hurry Ribs? Uh, yeah, I missed that. Jeez, I, I've been busy, though. It's on uh, Billboard's Top 100. It has a, a, a bullet point going down. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. Uh, all right, Ray, so it's been a little while since we've had you on the show the last time, so I'm sure there's at least seven or 500,000 things that we can talk about here tonight. And uh, is, is it all right if I kind of assumed that you would be down for two segments? Is that all right? Yeah, of course, Greg. Happy to, anytime. All right, so... Um, before we get into, you know, some of the, the bulleted items that I wanted to get into, just, you know, I mean, what's happening with you? You're a married man now. Uh, you, you know, you're, are you doing a lot of traveling, all this good stuff? I mean, what's happening with Dr. Barbecue? Not married. Still Not engaged. married yet. We're in no rush. It can go for what a you, while. What you know? are you waiting for? Make an honest <laughs> woman out of her for crying out loud. It's, it's, I've been busy. <laughs> I so, understand. I just got back from the IACP conference, International Association of Culinary Professionals in San Francisco, um, ate in all kinds of fancy restaurants, hung out with all kinds of fancy authors and a few bloggers and, oh, pretty stuffy. But if you're going to be in the cookbook business, you got to kind of go there and hang out with them folks. And it was fun. And then I went to Portland and cooked in front of a bunch of stores on the Big Green Egg for a few days. So it was a nice little West Coast swing for me. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. Uh, all right, Ray, so you have been associated with, uh, in some form or fashion, with this thing called grill stock. And for the people that aren't aware, uh, this isn't something that is national. You actually have to jump a plane, go across the pond over to the, the Englands. Um, you know, how many years is this for you now? And kind of give us a, an insight as to what exactly goes down this weekend. This is the fourth year for the event in Bristol. Uh, the original one, Big Green Egg, we had a new distributor over in England, so it was an excuse to go over there and kind of help get them started. And after that, the guys there that run Grill Stock enjoyed having me come over and, and you know, a real American barbecue guy. And, and, you know, so I said, well, I'll come back. Yeah, so this will be my third year going back just to work with them. Uh, it's really a lot of fun because the people are into it, man. They really are into American barbecue. They want to learn about it. Um, you know, the, the whole world smokes meat and, and cooks 
pigs and, and cows. It's not that out of the question. But the real barbecue, what Americans do, they really are hungry to learn about it. And that's what they want to do. It's kind of interesting. We get I get to judge every year and as part of it. And, and it's a mix of, uh, you know, typical American contest barbecue and just a European chef cooking what he would cook. And it's really kind of interesting, some of the entries. Um, we've had a mix of winners, too. Byron won one year and, you know, came over from America and probably cooked what he would normally cook. And last year, some Brits beat him, and uh, they're cooking very good food. My guess is it's uh, very much like our American barbecue with a little bit of local spin on it. Now, this year, they're going to have a second event in Manchester in June. I'm trying hard to get there. I haven't committed to it yet, but I sure want to. Uh, they've also opened up a, a stand where they're selling barbecue in town there, all under the grill stock name. It's really turning into this little, not little anymore, business. Um, they're just having a lot of fun with it, and people are so hungry for information about American barbecue and, frankly, to eat it. So it's really, it, plus, there will be some throwing down of liquor and, and beer and <laughs> Kinds of crazy other food. There, I seen a crazy like, uh, oh, Indonesian dude cooking kebabs all day on a little fire with no shirt on one year, and and they have a bunch of American kind of their take on uh, on our kind of bluegrass hillbilly music. It's really it's it's a blast, man. I'd say come if you're looking for an excuse to go to England, come to Grillstock. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. <laughs> so. You know, what was it like last year, maybe even around this time, there was uh, some talk about this British Barbecue Society and, you know, how barbecue in general is infiltrating England. I mean, you've seen it kind of transpire over the last couple of years. Has it been a continual growth over there? Do you see it like a grill stock turning into some type of a, I don't want to say sanctioning body, but some type of a, it, it recurs multiple times over the year versus just being like a one time a year party? Yeah, and it's already, like I said, it's already happening. This year they're having a second one in Manchester. Oh. But these guys, it's very much about the festival. There's a legit barbecue content. And anybody that tells me it's not legit can kiss my ass. You got Bad Byron cooking. You got the barbecue guru guys cooking. You got me judging. You got Andy Annett, who's been over here a hundred times to cook and judge barbecue. You got Jackie Wade, who won the Jack judging. Yeah. Anybody says this isn't legit barbecue is, is full of shit. Now, but I'll tell you that I have molded with these guys the judging to be something that's kind of crowd friendly and fits what they're doing. And I think it's great and it's been a huge success and, and everything is good. At the same time, you got Toby over there with the British Barbecue Society and they're doing their thing. Toby very much uh, wants to somehow be, you know, I don't know, a, a almost, uh, I, I have a hard time understanding how anything that is going on in England is more uh, American than the contest with me and Byron at, but whatever. You know, he's trying to take it very seriously in a different direction. But now there's another group that is going to have only KCBS contests, the UK Barbecue Society or something, <laughs> and they're going to have only sanctioned KCBS contests. KCBS, I'm guessing, is helping out a little bit with some of the costs there, but I think that's great, too. I got no problem with it. I'm happy to help them with what I think is a good idea for over there. If the KCBS contest can really work over there, more power to them. I'm happy to see all of it. Isn't that like what the biggest sticking issue was with the British Barbecue Society was that the KCBS was telling Toby, you are, in essence, uh, kind of taking our rules, making very minor changes, and we want you to cease and desist. And now, all of a sudden, KCBS has rolled out with this uh, international outreach barbecue program, which I imagine has to be like this hand-in-hand uh, hand -hand thing that you are talking about. Is it is it really in KCBS's interest to get international with it like that? Uh, is it like a revenue generator for them? What's the What do you think the end game over there is with them? Oh, typical KCBS, who knows what they're doing. It's a whole backdoor deal, the international outreach thing, and, and I'm not afraid to say it. You know, I, when I, I kind of made a stink about it last year because I didn't think it was right, it all went underground, and all of a sudden this year it resurfaced as this big program. You know, I have anybody, has anybody seen how much money KCBS is spending on this? I have not, no. Yeah, no, no, of course not. So uh, to me it's, a, oh, I don't know. What they're doing is good, I guess, I, I'm not necessarily convinced that 
a straight up um, American barbecue contest, full KCBS rules and everything is the best idea over there. That's why the one that I'm helping out with, we've sort of crafted it to fit what uh, I think is a better fit. But, you know, if it all works over there, I, I think it's great. I, I'm not against it. I don't know. I'm kind of surprised. We'll see how it shakes out. I, I just don't think people really want it quite what we have. Uh, the guys are hungry. The, the core guys that are really doing it are really hungry to, to learn about KCBS and be like it, but I, I'm not sure it's the best idea. As far as the thing between KCBS and Toby, yeah, it is kind of funny, isn't it? That, uh, on the other hand, I don't know. You know, as a guy who, who creates intellectual property for a living, I'm all about defending it, but I don't really know the specifics of that. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. You can find him drbbq.com on the Internet if you want to see what he's up to. Every once in a while, I see him tweet. He, of course, he's on the Facebook as well. Uh, transitioning a little bit out of that, Ray, you know, well, I guess Good, not. Thanks. I mean, Grill Stock is also this uh, part of this uh, World Food Championships in some way. How does that actually tie in? Well, they, they want the World Food Championship. Is, I was there last year in Las Vegas, and it was a blast. We had a great time. It's a what an undertaking, you know, if anybody's not familiar with it, there's seven contests. Uh, this year they changed the, the, the sessions. It, it's, you got barbecue, chili, sandwich, uh, burger. I think bacon is added this year. I think dessert. And I don't know what the seventh one is. I think it's a recipe challenge, but ultimately all seven end up at one table for the final table. Pretty cool. I, I think, uh, you know, what's the best food? It's pretty, can imagine trying to judge barbecue versus chili versus sandwich versus dessert. That's going to be quite a table there. And bacon, whatever that ends up being. But, they, you know, so to work backwards, they need qualifiers for this. And they, they truly believe this is going to be a great big thing. And they want to see international participation. So, of course, I put it in their ear that I thought Grill Stock was a pretty good event. and But they're looking for a lot of events. There's a bunch of international events. I just hope a whole bunch of those guys come because it'll make for a better World Food Championship. You know, staying with the World Food Championships for a second, you said you were there last year and you saw the undertaking and all the work that was put in there. What did you think for that first year event? And obviously you've seen it kind of grow into, you know, qualifiers leading up to running back to Vegas for that finals. Something bigger and better this year? Or are, are they almost overshooting a little too much too quick? Well, you know, disclosure, I, I do do some work with those guys, and I was there working for them last year, and hopefully I will be again this year. So, I, you know, I'm going to give you that as honest as I can be. I have a jaded view of it. I thought it was really great. I, I From my point of view, it was a fun event. For a first year, what they undertook was amazing. I mean, I, I, I know there was guys that had gravel in their spot and stuff like that, and, and you know, that's, that's never okay. But considering what they undertook, I thought it was outstanding. Um and the, everybody I saw was having a good time. It was just the sheer size of the whole thing was just insane. You know, those big casinos in, in Las Vegas. I mean, it, this thing went from we were doing cooking demos literally right on Las Vegas Boulevard. And the barbecue contest, God, it was a half mile from where I was. I mean, it, it was an amazing undertaking. I thought it was pretty darn good all around. Um, and I think it's going to be bigger and better this year. Yeah, they're they're not pulling any punches. They're going full steam ahead. All right, so that's World Food Championships, and that'll take place towards the end of the year. Uh, now switching gears, I guess, not only are you Dr. Barbecue, not only are you a guy who really, you know, when we, I was trying to, I was looking back through the archives, and I think we, we might have done our very first podcast interview back in 2006, believe it or not, so we're almost seven years removed from the first time we ever talked. And at that point, you know, you were, we were talking about how you quit the trucking industry, you moved down to Florida, you opened up the barbecue concession trailer, you started supplementing income with these classes, and you fast forward all the way now. There's actually another, you're like author, Dr. Barbecue Ray Lampy, as well from all the other things, and there's a new book coming out. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, funny how that happened. I, I often say when I wrote my first book, that red one, I thought I was writing a book. I really didn't. <laughs> I'd never written books. I mean, to this day, I've written, I'm working on my eighth book, and I, I use about three fingers, you know. It's not one finger, really, but the other, like, there's a couple that only have one key that they, they poke on. I really don't know how to type. And I never was a writer. I just, I reached a point in my life, I guess, where I, I, 
I had enough interesting stories to tell, and I was comfortable not trying to speak with words that I'm not familiar with. I speak as I speak. This is how it is. Uh, so, but the first book was, you know, it's easy. That one, you got all your jokes, you got your recipes, you got your goofy pictures, and you got all that stuff saved up. It's easy to write the first book. The second one's really hard because you don't have anything else to do. So I kind of thought I was done after I wrote that one. But it was okay. They liked that one. And the third one was Barbecue Road Trip. And, and by then, I was actually kind of getting good at it. I was... I was learning. You know, you're going to be an entrepreneur. You got to be able to learn fast. Yeah. And if somebody's willing to pay you for something, you better get good at it real quick. So I've I've kept pushing along, and uh, the last two I've been really happy with: Rib Shop Steaks and Wings and Slow Fire, both from Chronicle. Those guys make beautiful books, and they're just good people. That's why I was in San Francisco last week, just schmoozing with all them. I just finished, and we just actually it's not gone to print yet because. I just had the wording change to match up those new pork chop names last week. Uh, but my book coming out in October is called Pork Chop, and it's all about cooking pork chops. And I've been lucky enough to transition from writing just barbecue and grilling books to writing other books. I, I know how to cook in the kitchen, and, and I've been able to luckily talk them into letting me try that, too. So the pork chops are all different ways. There's grilled, there's smoked, there's pastrami pork chops, there's pot roast pork chops, there's pork chop noodle soup and lettuce wraps and all kinds of different things. <laughs> what are you talking about? Pork, pork chop noodle soup? It's really good. Wait till wow. you try it. I mean, there's no reason not to use pork chops for that. Pork chops are excellent. It's really good. It, it's funny. We looked at it. It was my idea, but we looked at it, and there are... No books written specifically about pork chops. There's probably a hundred about steaks and burgers and chicken breasts, and there's zero books about pork chops. So I'm really optimistic about this one. Plus, I think I wrote a kick-ass book. Can't wait to see it. How many pages is a pork chop book? Is it a normal length of page that you would find? I mean, hamburger books seem to be really popular. Last year, there's another one uh, from the guys that wrote Wicked Good Barbecue are coming out with a new hamburger book. Uh, that seemed to be the real hot trend over the last 12, 16 months. Uh, but look, I mean, you're you're a guy, as you said, entrepreneurial. you got to be outside the box all the time. And seeing that there was no pork chop book, I guess, to me, being a business guy as well, makes sense. Why not exploit that portion of it? How long does it take you to, to get, A, a working title, and then put together all of these recipes to get something to submit to the publisher? Well, you, luckily, after writing a few books, you don't have to write very much you have to write a pitch for them a few pages and a lot of it is boilerplate you know you just kind of paste all them pictures of me and my what i've done back in the on the uh pitch so uh, luckily i don't have to do too much of that but you get you get anywhere from six months to a year to write a cookbook uh you know in the old good old days we would get longer than that uh, the one i'm working on now which i can't talk about i've got a year pork chops i think i had six or eight months to write it um, and you know that's what you do. It's it, every time I'm at home. It, it's funny. Sandy got tired of eating pork chops, you know, because every day I was cooking at home, it was another recipe, and, and because of the subject, everything was pork chops. Um, but you know, it's just part of the process. That, that's now I've learned how to do it. I've learned to get good at it. Pages, I think it's 160 or something like that. Wow. They they found a happy spot for me. Those eight by eight books that really look good. Uh, they sort of have the attitude that these big mega books, people just don't buy them. If we make a book that's sized to fit uh, in a gift shop situation, an impulse buy kind of a thing, uh, it's gone pretty well. Um, and I'm happy to do it because it's a little more manageable to write those big mega books. And guys are still doing it, and they certainly still sell, but it's, it's a lot of work. You know, writing a 160-page 8x8 book is a whole lot easier than that. Are you concerned at all because, like, two weeks ago, or maybe it'll be two weeks Thursday, uh, the Pork Board and the Beef Checkoff Program decided that they were going to go ahead and start changing all the names of beef and pork now? So can it be called Pork Chop, or does it have to be called uh, Pork Tenderloin or, or Pork Porterhouse uh, Book now by Ray Lampy? That will be nice, Greg. I love the Pork Board. They're my friends. I'm not saying that I don't love them. I'm just saying they've went out of their way to fuck with everybody. Well, yeah, that was, I mean, it was a scramble because I, I saw that and was like, uh-oh. <laughs> and because and, I'd been talking to them and they know I'm writing the book and they're supporters. But, you know, it's big business uh, marketing play. They couldn't tell anybody, couldn't tell me that they were doing this. So when I first heard it, I was scrambling and, and we did get 
the wording changed where it needed to be in the book. So, I mean, the good news is I will probably, I can't imagine many books are going to beat me to the market with all the proper terminology. So hopefully they'll be happy about that. Oh, what's the big deal? I don't care. To me, the cuts aren't changing. Uh, I, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. And it's not like anybody's going to hold a gun to your head and make you call it that. I just don't think it's a big deal. Well, they're not going to make us call them, but if if the purveyors decide to use the new labeling system, do you think that there is a possible issue of consumers becoming more confused than they already are, or will this actually be more of of a sexy thing for them? Well, in the case of pork chops, I think it's good because how many people really know the difference between top loin chop and rib loin chop and and loin chop, and I mean, you know, they almost think pork chop is a pork chop, and and I think that's why I think that, you know, I think it's a good idea in the case of pork chops, and and syncing up with the beef, what the heck, why? I mean, if you can't figure out which one is the porterhouse chop, you know, <laughs> then you shouldn't, you probably can't cook anyway. Um, so I, I don't think it's a big deal. Now, as far as the other 345 new names or whatever that's about. I just don't know. I don't know how many really get used in the butcher case. Uh, you know, um, I think the guys will continue to, you know, how they like to label stuff as a rib or a steak because they can charge more money for it. I think you'll continue to see that. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. Ray, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to do a quick uh, commercial spot here. And yeah, then sure. uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more with you. I've uh, got a number of things we're going to be covering here, so uh, strap in, hold tight. And I'm ready. we'll get to you here uh, just after this. All right, folks, uh, let me talk to you quickly about, uh, well, JP is now the newest sponsor of the show, but before that, uh, really only like a couple of weeks uh, prior to that, it was a Kebroke Charcoal. Let me pull up my thing here. You can see a little bit of the website. You know what I love to do regardless of whatever time of year it is. I love to cook on my grills and smokers outside. If you have charcoal-fired outdoor cooking appliances, I encourage you to give Kebroke Charcoal a try for your next cooking session. Quite simply, one of the best-kept secrets around and used by award-winning barbecue competition teams and backyard warriors just like this guy. Kebroke Hardwood Charcoal made from natural hardwood trees without any additives. They only use high-quality wood for their charcoal, not scrap wood or any other wood waste or additives. This is real charcoal that humans have made for thousands of years since we left the caves and moved on to our patios and decks to enjoy the delight and wonderment. And all natural hardwood charcoal performs significantly better than regular charcoal. It burns longer, hotter, produces lower amounts of ash, but that taste it will impart on your food is second to none. You really got to try it. That's why I tell you to visit kebroke.com. That's K-E-B-R-O-A-K. Dot com to find out more about this product. They'll ship to all continental U.S. states through Amazon.com. Check out Amazon for free shipping on all their bags. But that most attractive option is their 40-pound bag, which you can get for right around a buck a pound. And that's a dollar a pound delivered right to your door. No hassle dragging it through the supermarket, getting your car full of dust. You just get it delivered to you, and boom, that is it. And if you're paying attention to Amazon, by the way, because I did make a Facebook post on this, Sometimes you can get it for sub 40 bucks. Right now it's over like $42. It seems like every couple days it might go up or down in price. But when I posted about it on my Facebook a couple days ago, it was at $33. You should have bought four bags like uh, my friend Steve did when he emailed me. Keep an eye on Amazon.com. That's where you buy it. I've used it for the last three weeks in a row. I've used it for high heat grilling. I've used it for 225 slow smoking in my Bubba Keg. And I really haven't had any complaints about it. You know, the thing you always hear most about hardwood lump charcoal is the fact that it sparks like crazy when you're lighting it initially, especially when you have a, a map torch or a weed burner like I got. Really to a minimum, but you got to try it for yourself. That's why I want to tell you that this has been a secret of Southern Miami for years, and now it's ready for the world to enjoy. Kebroke.com, that's K-E-B-R-O-A-K, Kebroke.com. Try yours. Get yours now. Amazon.com has it. It's Kebroke Charcoal. Proud sponsor of the Barbecue Central Show. All right, uh, we're going to do a quick giveaway here, and then we'll get back with more Ray Lampy, your chance to win some JP Custom Smoke Rubs coming up. And then, again, Ray Lampy right out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Can you feel it? Feel it? Feel it? Now, the time 
for the show when you give, give, give stuff away, gonna give it away for free at no cost, so get ready to send that email right, 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 right now. Man, where does the genius come from on those songs? One is sure to find out. All right, uh, your chance to win a 14-ounce chicken rub and a 14-ounce pork rub. Uh, both come in shaker bottles. Will be given to the lucky winner. JPCustomSmoke.com is the website. Check it out. Uh, John has some of the best rubs out there on the market right now. Pick some up for yourself. JPCustomSmoke.com. But you can win a 14-ounce chicken rub and a 14-ounce pork rub right now. Send me an email in the subject line, Dr. BBQ. Spell doctor out. Don't be a lazy ass, Central Lights. Dr. BBQ. For your chance to win uh, JP Custom Smoke, we're up. Good luck. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Big B. All right, we are back. 877-448-0433. Greg at, wow, look at them all come in. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. All right, let me get a winner here real quick. And it looks like the winner of the JP Custom Smoke goes to uh, Grand Pappy of Pork. Grand Pappy of Pork. I don't know who that is exactly, but I'm going to make sure that I make a note of that in case I lose it in the email. Grand Pappy of Pork. All right. Uh, Grand Pappy of Pork, send me your shipping info in a separate email, and I'll make sure that John Patty gets you your stuff. All right. Ray, thanks for hanging with me through the break there. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the new meat labeling. Uh, another thing that I want to talk to you a little bit about, and I know you've actually competed in it, is this uh, Sam's Club series. I believe that we're now in the fourth year of it, and it seems to be, or I believe, third year, I'm sorry. And really, it seems to be growing in popularity. You've seen it. You've competed in it. Where do you think the state of that series is right now, and is it growing in the right direction? Well, this year I, I didn't wasn't able to cook the one in Tampa. I'm not scheduled to cook any of them. I, I'm scheduled to judge one in uh, Wisconsin, I think, in July. So I can't. I haven't seen it since last year. But the first two years I did cook, and I did move to the regionals both years. And I'm a huge fan now. You know, unless something's changed, I think it's cool. I really like it. I I really think that the 30 team contest is so much more manageable and as a competitor or as a judge or as a spectator i just don't see the difference to me these 100 team you know we we somehow along the way we got the mentality that the bigger contests are better well yeah it does kind of create more prize money but i just see it as such a hassle i really dug the the small 30 team contest aspect of it and i like the tournament format i think it's pretty cool it's pretty hard to say that you don't end up with a a quality winner or quality field i should say in bentonville you know the top six move on from the from the opening round well hey if you don't make it a top six sorry bud and then the top 10 from the regionals i mean i think this is a really cool format hopefully the best teams are there if they're choosing to participate and it, I like that seeing that guys will go different ways, have different strategies. I know Fast Eddie was up in Seattle last weekend cooking because he just it worked out for him. He could fly up there and borrow a cooker and go to Las Vegas. Oh, well, he finished seventh, oh, so I, I don't know. know if everybody went. Yeah, it was, and, and it was like seventh, and it wasn't like by three points. It was seventh by like a, a tenth or a hundredth of a point. He was so close. Did the top six guys, are they all going, though? He wasn't sure when I talked to him last. Uh, I didn't hear if the top six were going or not, but just through looking at the standings, I mean, you know, I know Eddie's a pretty competitive guy, so I'm sure he uh, took that one a little <laughs> bit hard to, you know, to just be squeaked out by that kind of a point retention. But, I mean, that stuff's cool. I think it's really, there's so many angles to it and all. And, I mean, and of course, I like seeing big sponsors step up and put a bunch of money on the table because, you know, this is my real job. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not doing it as a hobby. Uh, one of the, I guess one of the, problems with the barbecue world that, our, that I live in, it's so fragmented because there's there's uh, hobbyists, you know, competition guys, retired and stuff, that don't really want to be bothered with the sponsors and stuff. Oh, everybody likes to win prize money, but, and then you get over in the Kansas City area, there's still a lot of old school guys that are really just out for the fun weekend with their friends and stuff, and it, it, it's really fragmented. I don't know what the solution is, but there's a lot of different uh, opinions. From my point of view, what Sam's is doing is a really good idea. 
Do you see a point, and, and I've, I've, I don't know if I've asked you this before, but I know I've asked Mike McLeod, and he, he didn't not answer it. Um, but I don't know if he's allowed to answer it uh, honestly since he's kind of uh, affiliated between KCBS and Sam's and getting that whole deal put together. Do you see a winning proposition where Sam would say, uh, appreciate the, the structure and the foundation, we're going to go ahead and, and, and do our own thing next year and not be associated uh, with KCBS or, uh, or or just do our own thing? Or does, does that not make any sense from uh, any type of standpoint? Um, I mean, certainly they could, you know, their Sam's Club, but I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we take KCBS so for granted because we've all been part of it for years. I've been a member since 1991, um, counted Gary and Carolyn as good friends and, you know, over the years. And we, we, I don't think we maybe see it the same way outsiders do. It's the big sanctioning body, like it or not. Uh, it yeah. is the big 800 pound gorilla so why wouldn't they want to be associated with that i and, and frankly kcbs <laughs> eddie we used to talk about one of the one of the mistakes they make is that they're too cheap you know maybe it should cost five thousand dollars to even talk to kcbs and then we see what we would have i don't know but because it's not i i don't know i i guess they could but i just don't see it sort of gives it great credibility to have KCBS come and officiate the thing because it's done part of this whole other thing, why would they? You know, I I, I just I, I'd be surprised. I just don't see it in the grand scheme of of Sam's and Tyson and and all the people that are involved. I just don't see the money they pay to KCBS as much of a deal, and it gives you instant credibility. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show, drbbq.com, his website. If you want to check him out, uh, obviously sponsored by Coca Cola. <laughs> Right. Yep. Do, uh, wait. Wait a second. Breaking news. Are you? Are you? Did you pick up a new sponsor, Ray? Well, no. no I don't even get to cook content anymore. So they're not really a sponsor. However, I <laughs> did do a nice Super Bowl promotion at Sam's Club for Coke Zero in in New Orleans this year. So um, I have cast a check that came from them. Oh, wonderful! All right. Well, at least uh, about my dirty water too. You, so I figured you're, I would. you're getting you're getting money for uh, for doing coke. So we love that about Doctor Barbecue Ray Lampy. All right. So uh, here's nobody caught that. Um, KCBS, and you've been affiliated in some form or fashion with them for like a number of years. I just want to get your take on this. You know, last week I had a guy on who was uh, banned for three years because one of his teammates wore a penis apron up on uh, on stage for awards and. You know, it was a lot of uh, he said, she said stuff, and he kind of laid out his uh, portion of the story in the first hour last week. But let me ask you this question. As someone who's been around that sanctioning body now, you know, is that something that would have flew 15, 16, 17 years ago? And because of how it's evolved and grown over those years, it's something that can't be done now? Or do you think that was yeah, like I, kind of a bunch of bullshit? Oh, I don't know. What are you going to do? The guy's wearing the fake dick on stage. You got you got to punish. You can't do that. You know, I don't know. I but mean, it, it's, is, is could, it could funny? You have done yes. that? Could you have done that 17 years ago and nobody would have thought twice about it? it? Might not have. They might not have noticed. I can. I mean, I can. I can't. It's hard to answer that. But I can tell you there was a whole lot more drinking and carousing going on 17 years ago or however many years ago than there is now. The guys are so serious now about their competing that there isn't the the drunken party atmosphere hardly at all and when i started there was even at the jack i mean now you go to the jack nobody's drinking um i mean we were we were throwing down when i first went to the jack i saw a dirty dick get a glass a red cup pretty much full of uh of gentleman jack and he drank it eventually i i don't uh I don't know. It was a lot, it was a different world, but something like that. I don't know. I, I'd like to think. You know, you also got to remember we didn't have the internet back then, so a guy might have got away with it, might have gotten in trouble locally, but everybody didn't know about it. Yeah. Um, I, if anything, I guess I think maybe they should crack down a little bit more on stuff, it, just because this is now it's become a big thing. It's a big important thing. Uh, and we can't have that kind of behavior. I, do I think it's funny? Yeah. Would I laugh my ass off if I was there? Yeah. Um, would I wish I did it? Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but I think you got to get punished. Sorry, dude. All right. Um, you know, a lot of people are weighing in on the instant chat saying, you know, 17 years ago it didn't cost 750 to to $1,000 to compete. 
So yeah. the uh, the people's razor sharp focus and ultra high competitive thing is the fact that, well, hey, not a lot of people have these expendable dollars that they had, you know, even ten years ago when the economy was great and everybody was making millions of dollars and housing was inflated, so on and so forth. You know, now you got to kind of pick and choose where you want to have that disposable income to go. So if I'm going to be Dude, that's the main reason I don't compete. Because I'm going to spend seven hundred and fifty dollars on a weekend. It's going to be in Sea Town, in my backyard, with kegs of beer, and I'm going to make the barbecue, and I'm going to vomit in my own backyard instead of getting my ass handed to me in somewhere in you know wherever the next KCBS contest is. But that's just me. So if you're going to spend that well, kind of money, I mean, you want to have that focus in that competition. Well, yeah, I, I, there's no doubt. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing, and I'm not saying I don't understand it. I do. We're, we're men too, you know. Nobody buys a ten horse motor and a little rowboat, and that's their last boat, you know. I mean, <laughs> we're guys, so you start buying more equipment. Hell, you, you ever see those old pictures that were showing up about at the Jack from a lot, like twenty years ago? We didn't even have easy ups. Guys were just standing out there in the rain with their smokers. Um, so, but you know, you don't have to buy two Snake River Farms briskets to show up at the cook-off either. Um, you know, you can still entry fees. Frankly, haven't changed that much. I okay, maybe you know when I was, I don't remember them ever being less than one fifty. So okay, now you're paying two fifty for some of them. That's a hundred bucks, but the, that's not seven fifty. The seven fifty is, uh, you know, the wagyu and and the. Uh, everybody buying, you know, they buy all their products now too. We used to actually show up and make barbecue sauce sometimes. You'd go into Sam's and buy a couple butts and a pack of chicken. I'm not saying it's wrong. I, I do it too, you know. It, it's a competitive world. You also don't have to have a giant fifth wheel to live in for the weekend. But I'm not against it. I, I, I'm not saying it's bad. But, you know, the, don't you spend, you choose to spend that money. I, I, I'm not saying it's wrong to be more serious. I'm just saying it's different. Dr. Barbecue joining us here on the show. Ray Lampy, drbbq.com is the website if you want to check them out. You know, we, you kind of hit on it a little bit early as far as all the, the factions and the, the, uh, the I'm going to make up a word, the breakification of barbecue right now. You know, you have some other regional sanctioning bodies. You have an IBCA, you have a Florida Barbecue Association, you have the biggest, obviously, being KCBS. You know, do you see a point over the next five or ten years where, uh, like, almost like in business where you see KCBS kind of go in and, and buy out or, or will it always remain kind of like in the old days before WWE became the biggest wrestling body and kind of overtook all those little regional wrestling things where it's always going to be fractured no matter what. Yeah, I think it probably always will be. I don't know. I mean, I don't see KCBS like buying guys or trying to take over. One thing I, I've been, I've been in Florida now for 12 years and I was, I'm a founding member of the FBA, I was there at the first, not at the first contest, but I, I think I won the first contest ever held in Florida uh, and with the FBA. So I, I know how that all worked. I, the other ones I don't know much about, but I can tell you that over the years, I've seen the Florida guys with a lot more attitude towards KCBS than the KCBS. Certainly not the actual people that run KCBS. They're not that worried about it. You know, They're just doing their thing. Um, I guess that's the nature of things when you're the big cheese, but I just don't think they're that worried about it. Uh, I mean, it's a not-for-profit, you know. It's not. I don't know. I, I mean, you know, there's always egos involved, but I just don't think they're that worried about it. Maybe they should be. Uh, you know, I, I'm not. I don't agree that maybe they shouldn't be worried about it and try to be the all-powerful. But I just don't think they're that worried about it. Um, and maybe it all, you know, kind of stems from Carolyn. Carolyn's a very non-combative kind of person, and. And it's kind of got that, that's how I think of KCBS with that same kind of vibe. Um, I just don't think they're that worried about it. There's a new board in. Uh, they've got a couple months underneath their belt, maybe one month underneath their belt. Well, two, I guess. Uh, how do you think they're moving along? I mean, there, there hasn't been as much outcry of we need to make change this, we need to make change that. Uh, it seemed that, you know, when Candy took over the presidency and they had that uh, the four horsemen kind of go in there, all of a sudden you didn't really hear too much. It almost seemed like there was um, at least a, a perceived hope of cohesiveness with this board to kind of put some of that stuff aside that you were always hearing about in the Internet chatter rooms and, and through other interviews. Uh, you think they're kind of rolling along in that same vein right now with the new board? I guess. I haven't really been following it that much. Uh, once I got rid of Merle, <laughs> they fixed everything. When, I'm being sarcastic, but <laughs> um, I, I don't know. You know, it's it's... 
it's it's one of them things. It's it's God bless them all. You know, I did it. I was on there for a half of a term, and it sucks. It's it it's you know, poor Mike Peters. I told him, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And uh, we'll see how long he's <laughs> until he says. Actually, I think the first day I got to tell him, I told you so. Something came up, and I was giving him a hard time. It's miserable because everybody's again, like I was saying about all the different fragmentation. Um, People have different ideas of what it should be, uh, understandably, and and they but they're all sure that theirs is the perfect solution, and and these poor board members have to listen to all of that, and I feel sorry for them, frankly. I was in the bar last night, and the city councilman walks in and gets like the first thing that anybody says to him is like starts hassling him about the new pier they're building in St. Pierre and Pete. And, and that's how I, I warned Mike Peters. I was like, why get involved? I appreciate guys <laughs> wanting to get on there and, and, uh, help, but yeah. it's also, you know, it's also like, we've all been involved in these things where guys that apparently don't get to be in charge of much in their real life want to be in charge of stuff and, and their their volunteer situation and i've sort of washed my hands of it all i, I i've tried a lot over the years to help out and I, the love has never gone both ways so uh you know we coexist he is a living legend he's a multiple time author the Executive chef for Big Green Egg. You can find them all over the place. Uh, the website, drbbq.com. Of course, I'm talking about Ray Lampy. Ray, always appreciate the time. Thanks for coming on tonight. Anytime, Greg. Good to talk to you. Oh, uh, You too. There he is. Ray Lampy at Dr. Barbecue. Ray, today. Hey, he, he said on Facebook when he was coming on, I'm not, not going to be uh, pulling any punches. I'm going to have to make some justice here. Hold on a second. Oh, Lord, oh, Mike. Looks like, looks terrible. See, you make make those little adjustments. No, don't want to do that. No, don't want to do that. Black. Oh, boy. Okay. And then I want to hit the key. White. Sorry you're seeing this technical stuff here. Very technical. Oh, uh, it's the white, right? Oh, man. One of these things is not right. One of these things is not like the other, ladies and gentlemen. And there's the green screen. Now it goes away. Oh. Oh, that's right. Just keep at it. And here we go. Gang, if you're like me, you want to step that barbecue and grilling gang up. Not only one notch, but like uh, ten notches, if at all possible. I'm going to show you a way that you can do that right here, right now. You can probably figure it out for yourself. Gang, you know, it's Butcher's Barbecue. That's right. Now, maybe you need some validation before you head on over to ButcherBBQ.com. Fine. How about three winners of the Houston Livestock Barbecue Contest have all used and won with Butcher's Barbecue? Top teams in the KCBS, FBA, IBCA all use Butcher Barbecue products. How about the fact that the pitmaster of Butcher Barbecue uses Butcher Barbecue products? That's right. You know, some pit masters out there, they might hawk their own stuff, and they don't actually use it because it's not winning on the competition trail. Not for David. He's winning with his own stuff. Need I say more? Uh, we all know Butcher's Barbecue, well-known for the injections, the pork, the beef. Now that prime injection, which has combined all the things loved from their beef injection, using its award-winning flavor enhancer and its ability to keep your brisket juicy. Now they've combined it with what has become the competition standard in beef flavor. Available for sale right now on ButcherBBQ.com. That's the website I have right up there for you. Now, if you're looking for a go-to rubber sauce, you hit a mother load here as well. Butcher's Barbecue, a full line of award-winning rubs. I personally like that steak and brisket rub because I'm a meat guy. You might be uh, a pork person. The honey rub is going to go well. Uh, it garnered a lot of attention last year on the Internet, winning a, a bunch of different awards. Look, try that premium rub, especially if you inject with Butcher's because it is formulated to work with the injection. A perfect one-two punch to impress judges and friends alike. Some of us don't compete like me. Impress the friends instead. Last but not least, the Butcher's Barbecue Sauce. Oh, man. You know, when it comes to sauce, I'm as picky as it gets. I think we can all agree on that. But Butcher's Sweet Sauce wins in every category for me. Not overly sweet, a nice slice of tang, just the right amount of back-end heat. For crying out loud, no liquid smoke. Dave took that time and effort to make a quality sauce. Didn't take the easy way out like most do when they add that liquid smoke. No worries on shipping. You're not going to break that bank. Items totaling up to 55 bucks. Ship at $8.50. 
55 to 200 ship at 9.75. That's a nine dollars and seventy-five cents, and anything over two hundred dollars ships for free, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Head on, head on over to butcherbbq.com. That's butcherbbq.com. And stockpile now. When I tell you to get that sauce, get six. Buy it in the six pack. It's going to go like hotcakes. All right, uh, when we come back, your chance to win a barbecue hook from bbqhooks.com. Uh, then we'll wrap it up and kick it over to the second hour. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Networks. Now's the time on the show where we get stuff away. Yeah. It's free and you don't have to pay a thing. That's why it's free. Yeah. Ah, damn it, I hate when I'm jammed up for time. All right, uh, your chance to win a barbecue hook. Graciously donated by uh, Marsha Fox, bbqhooks.com. If you're hooking, you're not cooking. Unless you're in Vegas. Way different. Way different. Uh, bbqhooks.com uh, you send me an email that says KCBS Board of Directors KCBS Board of Directors and you can win a barbecue hook courtesy of bbqhooks.com email subject uh, KCBS Board of Directors good luck broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network studios in Cleveland, Ohio you're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show once again, here's your host, Greg Rampy. All right, we are back. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. If you're watching, you can see the contact information right there. Ooh, graphics. Uh, 877-448-0433, Greg at the BBQ Central Show. Uh, all right, let's see. And winning the barbecue hook is Mark Gabrick. He wins a lot. Mark Gabrick. Got to write this down on paper just in case I forget about it. Not very smart, you know. I'll have you know I'm not very smart. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and wrap this up in the first hour. I want to go ahead and thank... Hi, I'm Johnny Dam, host oh. of the Damage Report. You just hold on a second, Johnny Dam. You'll get your chance. I um, want to thank Ray Lampy for joining me for two segments, covering the new book, covering uh, labeling, covering... We don't really talk about the big green egg. I wanted to ask him about this thing. The extra, 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 extra large big green egg. That's a mini big green egg inside of that big green egg right there, by the way. That's right. It's pretty big. Um, whoa. And. Oh. I just, no, okay, I did that one. Uh, also, sharing his thoughts on the KCBS. Outstanding stuff, as always. DRBBQ.com. All right, uh, step away and uh, reload for the second hour. You're listening to Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Network. I'm Johnny Dam, host of the Damage Report radio show. When I'm not falling in love with the First Amendment all over again, I like to sit back, relax, and rub my meat to the Barbecue Central show. And now your host, Greg Rempe. Go, Greg. Yeah, rub that meat. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what? We ate fifty four wieners. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Ooh. Top men. All right, just like that, we are in the second hour. 
Well, I'd really like to, uh, see if I can't get my, uh, sorry, 877-448-0433, uh, Greg at the BBQ at centralshow.com. Uh-oh, where'd I go? Where'd I go? Oh. Is that me? There we go. Oh, Lord. This is something else. New uh, new production software, folks. All right, so I want to get rid of this. I want to add me. Give me one second. Uh, yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah, that's right. Now you can hear me. Um, funky background and no... So yeah. No. It's green screen technology, folks. All right. Uh, so thanks again to Ray Lampy. Uh, still to come tonight, Mike Peters coming in about 10 minutes from now. Derek Rich is helping me close out the show, bbq.about.com. Uh, for those of you waiting to see if I have uh, any take on the events that took place in Boston a few days ago, at this point, I don't. Uh, I'm going to wait until there is a solid conclusion before I say anything. Um, if I end up saying anything at all, which I probably won't, uh, but I do want to offer my condolences and well wishes to those affected by the blast in Boston. Uh, again, a uh, sense of tragedy. And I do want to reiterate, um, that regardless, you know, treat it, treat every day. Like it's, la you know, tell everybody you love. Them. When's the last time you told your mom you love? Them? When's the last time uh, you told your dad you love them? or your kids, you know, just do it every day. You know, if something happens, you can't say that you didn't say it. Uh, live that way, and it'll be all right. Uh, on the show next week, Paul James of PK Grills. Anybody familiar with PK Grills? I know some of you are. It's all aluminum. It's a pretty cool cooker. Might want to check that out. And Robin Lindars uh, from GrillGrill.com. Man, do we have a great time to talk with her. Some feminazi woman hating lady from Huff Post took a run at her, saying that she was making like sexual references or whatever on her blog. <laughs> it was something, all right. Um, case B. All right. Yeah. So Mark was uh, well ahead of the game. I believe he just sent me his email address for the barbecue hook. Uh, Mark, let me tell you in advance as someone who has had a barbecue hook for some time now, those things are sharp as hell. And you can easily uh, stick it right through your finger. I'm not even kidding. Sometimes I kid. I'm a little sarcastic. Maybe you didn't know that about me. Um, yeah, uh, they will go right through your finger and definitely skewer your eyeball if you're not paying any attention. 877-448-0433 if you want to get in touch with the show or email greg at the BBQ com. I did have a song ready to go. And am I going to have to push that to next week? I better. Just in case. I want to make sure I got enough time for Mike. You know, I talked to Ray about this uh, meat label changing thing to everyone. And I, I was going through the KCBS website over the weekend, getting some results and all that stuff. It's made it, folks, into KCBS. And I found this in the minutes of the last meeting uh, from Jeff Stiff, who I uh, got elected, by the way, to the BOD. Uh, under the rules section of the last meeting, it has been brought to my uh, to our attention that the beef and pork industries will be launching new official names for certain cuts of meat this summer. Pork butts will no longer be referred to as such, but rather Boston Roast. These changes are in an effort to make the names of meat 
cuts less confusing to the general public and apparently to take away the enjoyment that barbecue people get from making jokes about butts. We will need to make adjustments to the wording of our definition of pork prior to the end of this year when this occurs and all teams will be notified. Yikes. It's making its way all the way up to the very top levels of barbecue competition. Also, the Sam's Club series rolled into good old Renton, Washington this past weekend to round out the last local qualifier in Las Vegas. Um, Well, that's the last local qualifier. And moving to the regional in Las Vegas, Nevada, the six teams moving on to that regional round, which is next week in Las Vegas, or this coming weekend, I guess I should say. Uh, Number one, this uh, team is called Moving the Chains. And folks, if you follow the, the scores as I do, you know, sometimes you can put 7, 8, 10, 15, I've seen 15, 20 points between first and second place. I'm no mathematician, but by my wit and wisdom, Moving the Chains edged out Piggy D's Barbecue. Uh, the winning score, 666. <laughs> dot eight five seven four so we've taken it out to the ten thousandths place piggy d's barbecue six 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 eight five seven zero so literally by four ten thousandths of a point moving the chains brings it home grand champion piggy d's barbecue reserve wine country q third place tombstone barbecue fourth bad bones barbecue fifth place and rounding out the sixth place War Pig Barbecue. So those six teams will be moving on to the regional round in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is uh, this, this, wait, four, one thousandths. That's what I said, right? Damn it. Um, uh, Did I say I wasn't a mathematician? They'll all be going to the regional round in Las Vegas, which is this coming weekend. And then that region uh, is done. The Las Vegas region, done, closed, Uh, See you, folks, in October (laughs) for the challenge. (laughs) Ten teams moving on at that point. That's a little bit of a layoff. I'm not saying nobody's going to cook until October, of course. I do want to give special mention to a centralite. (laughs) Diane Meat, Lake House Barbecue for finishing 12th overall. Way to go, Diane. Very respectable finish out there. Strong field. Obviously hotly contested. I mean, it was less than... Uh, eight points, I think, between first and sixth. So, um, first class competition out there. Oh, man, see, I'm putting that weird position. All right, now I got to find this song. What the hell did I do with it? Um, if I do, I have it. Where did I put it? Damn it! I had it saved somewhere. Joe song. Hmm. Would I have saved it to music? Oh, Lord. Oh, here it is. All right, for your review. For your review, I am uh, offering up uh, slow. This is called Slow Smoked Meat. Uh, This is done in the vein of um, ZZ Top, right? ZZ Top. You tell me what you think. Let me uh, pump up the base here a little bit more. Uh, by the way, this is a Joe Haynes on uh, guitar and vocals right here. Uh, it's coming up. Trust me, this is the best part of the song. Just kidding. Just kidding, Joe. All right, well, uh, I think we could agree on a couple things. Joe, very good guitar player. Joe, questionable vocalist. I think we'd agree on it. All right, uh, that's Slow Smoke Meat from Joe Haynes. Uh, OC Barbecue. OCB? Obsessive Compulsive Barbecue. He writes a block. Check it out. And I'm sure that's actually up there. I believe he sent me a video, too, which I didn't have time to download. Hard wood, good wood, good loving in the neighborhood. Joe Applebee's might have a lawsuit. 
waiting on your doorstep. Good effort, though. He had some tasty licks, to coin a phrase. Folks, let me talk to you quickly about the longest-running sponsor of the show. Uh, Adam from, I believe it's Trip Barbecue, saying best song ever. There you go, Joe. You got a fan. From Warminster, Pennsylvania, folks, the Barbecue Guru, longest-running sponsor of the show. And uh, they are here to help you with all of your automatic pit temperature control device needs. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you their stable of automatic pit temperature control devices right there. That's right. Uh, you have the Nano Q, the DigiQ DX2. You have, uh, let me see if I can actually uh, punch this up a little bit. Zoom in. So, you know, basically, if you have a, uh, a level of uh, geekdom that you are looking to fill, this is the way to go. CyberQ Wi-Fi. You have a Party Q, which is the easiest point of entry into automatic pit temperature control world. Uh, let me uh, show you the prices here on the other two. And then you have the uh, Nano Q, the DigiQ DX2, the CyberQ2. Uh, these are all fabulous automatic pit temperature control devices that uh, you can get if you visit the bbqguru.com. Now, uh, you might be a little bit worried. You're like, oh, geez, what am I going to do? Um, I don't know how to do this or that, or am I going to get the right automatic pit temperature control device for my cooker? They'll help you take all the guesswork out of it. All you have to do is call them 800-288-GURU. That's 800 800- 288 guru and bob or one of the very qualified staff members will outfit you with exactly what you need to get you right up and running out of the box 877 uh, i'm sorry uh 800 288 guru 800 288 guru you can also email them uh, or visit the website thebbqguru.com of course they do have the onyx oven which has been winning in backyards and on the competition circuit for some time now so you want to check that out if you're looking for a cooker as well. But look, I'll look no further. These are the people that created automatic pit temperature control technology. Why would you buy it from anybody else? Great question. I don't have an answer for that. I wouldn't. I would buy from the Guru. Again, help them get you outfitted with exactly what you need to get your up and running right out of the box. 800-288-GURU or the BBQGURU.com. The Barbecue Guru, a breakthrough in barbecue technology. We're back with Mike Peters right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Casting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, we are back. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Those are two ways to get in touch with me should you uh, feel fit to weigh in tonight. A lot of people saying that the uh, Joe Haynes song was uh, awesome. Doesn't get any better than that. Uh, but, you know, what can I say? Your music preference might differ from mine. That's fine. We're not here to cast any stones or anything like that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and race over the hotline. Uh, Pitmaster of Pure Piggy Piggy and a uh, Kansas City Barbecue Society Board of Directors. Let's welcome in uh, Mike Peters to the show. Mike, how are you, buddy? Mike. Mike. Hey, Greg, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't see you. Well, it's this damn technology crap. And it's on my end this time. Mike, it's, uh, I have to say, uh, as someone <laughs> who publicly hammered me for having audio and tech, uh, video technical difficulties at a competition in Miami, Oklahoma, all I can say is karma's a bitch. Get that big stuff out of here. Karma is a bitch, pal. All right. Uh, so, Mike, I appreciate you taking time out to join me here. And uh, we're going to be talking about a couple different uh, objects here tonight. Uh, but first and foremost... Uh, you know, you're, you are the pitmaster or co-pitmaster of Here Piggy Piggy Barbecue Team. And we'll get in the uh, KCBS, a Great American Barbecue Tour here in just a second. Yeah, Maybe a little background for the people who don't know you. How you got into barbecue, when you started competing, good stuff like that. 
Uh, it was back in 2002, Greg. We uh, had a free entry at a barbecue contest and uh, took, I believe it was first place in the beef category. It was a backyard event and uh, kind of got hooked ever since. It was uh, one of those things that, you know, you start off with a stolen smoker and uh, <laughs> and not even an easy up. And uh, now we have a 16-foot toy hauler, a stumps, a rebel, a big green egg, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's terrible. It's now, what, what, when you say you uh, stole a smoker, what does that mean exactly? Well, it belonged to our work place, and we just never took it back. Ah, I see. So uh, uh, permanently borrowed, I think, might be a better term. I, you know, uh, somebody had 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 spray painted an obscenity on it, so we spray painted <laughs> over it. So, therefore, possession was nine tenths of the law, and it it all worked out as it always is. Mike Peters joining us here on the show. All right, so how does your I guess love of barbecue and that uh, want to get into the competition scene uh, kind of grow into deciding to to, to make that attempt, or, or how did the Great American Barbecue Tour and you kind of link up? Well, if if you were people remember, Ernie and Linda Poland were the very first barbecue tour team uh, back six years ago, and uh, they came out of retirement. They uh, traveled. Um, I think they put in for like three events and decided it was way too much work, and they wanted to go back to retirement and repping and and great contest reps, great CBJs, uh, fantastic people. And uh, I I always joke I was the first one to answer the email when KCBS put out, hey, we're looking for another barbecue team for the next year. And little did we know that it was for that year and they wanted somebody now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was one of those. Wow. Uh, and, and it's been, what, pretty much kismet ever since? You know, it's it's been great. I, I was a uh, banker, uh, managed a banking center. My bank was robbed twice in eight days. Twice? Right about the time that this opportunity came up. So oh, my Lord. Yeah, it was all in the stars and in the in the smoke it was meant to be not to diverge too much off topic here but uh what's it like to be robbed at a bank i mean it seems to be like one of those stereotypical things to be being robbed i guess you know because there's money there but when it's actually I, happening like what what kind is this a full-on like gun robbery is it a, a passing of a note what is it like uh the the first one the guy came in with a gun and oh, uh, i never saw him one of my tellers did and uh just some scary stuff when you watch the tapes that go back that it, it could have been so much worse uh and the second one was a note robbery and uh you know it, it's just one of those things those things happen it's part of the nature of the business but uh cooking barbecue is a hell of a lot more fun yeah and i, I would imagine uh, over the long haul probably uh, even a little bit safer uh which is always a good thing right Definitely, definitely. No doubt about it. All right, uh, Mike Peters joining me here on the show. All right, so uh, tell people if they if they haven't been out to experience a great American barbecue tour con, um, event, what do you guys do? Well, what kind of a, a time investment is this thing for you guys? Uh, I mean, this isn't like you're uh, going somewhere for a weekend and then, you know, driving or flying back to your home and then you get to fly back out to, like, the next destination, right? Right. Uh, last week we were in uh, Somerville, Georgia. We were at their uh, first year event. Uh, it was the first stop of the tour. We will go through World Food Championships in mid-November. Uh, we're home this week. Our home event is Springfield, Missouri. Rock and Ribs will be uh, – took the trailer out today, taking our personal trailer out tomorrow, uh, get to cook this one and do the dog and pony show. So we get, we get to do a little bit of that too. But uh, after that, we're pretty much on the road for – 10, 11 weeks before we get home. Wow. So uh, that's quite a an investment to be out on the road that long, right? It is. Uh, lucky for us, we still have a, a daughter at home with a dog. and um, So she keeps an eye on the house. We've got great neighbors. Uh, my wife and I really have uh, grown to enjoy our time together. Uh, people that work with their spouses. Oh, you're going to ruin my next question, Mike. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, before we get into that, which, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you going to just offer that up. What what can you expect when you go to a, uh, a tour event? If I'm going to be attending it, what are you going to be showing me? We're, we sample product from our different sponsors. So uh, Reese's Fine Foods will have macaroni, and, uh, macaroni salad samples, uh, Hidden Valley Ranch potato salad samples. Depending on the market, we're doing Smithfield pork or farmland pork products. 
uh, up off of the Big Green Egg. Uh, the Big Green Egg is powered by the barbecue guru, and we use our thermopens to, to tempt all the meat. Um, everything gets involved, and, and everything gets used, and uh, just promoting the product from the sponsors because they're the ones that are, are supporting KCBS and supporting paying our bills. We're educating the public, though, and Chris is always really big on that the education side because not a lot of people – know the best way to cook a pork loin, know the best way to cook ribs, uh, things along those lines. So we, we try to tie our competitive barbecue background into the backyard cooker and and show them some tips and tricks. Do you have to make sure that you are delineating between what is backyard and what is competition? Because, you know, at least from talking with pitmasters like yourself and, and a number of others during you know every week's show for the last seven years, a lot of people don't cook what they would eat in the backyard as they are in competitions. Um, yeah, for the most part. I mean, we, we try to make it as simple and easy as it, as it possibly is. A lot of people that, that come up and want to jump into the, the competitive world of barbecue, and, and I'm always telling them, go for it. You know, the, the backyarders that want to do chicken and ribs and only do a couple, couple categories, it's like, screw that. Um, don't jump both feet in and do the whole four categories. You can't screw it up, and, and the chances are you're Anybody can win on any given weekend. So we try to show the competition ribs. I always ask people, do you like your ribs falling off the bone? And everybody, of course, raises their hand. So <laughs> that's wrong. This is this is this will score you down. And so we, we try to play it in as best we can. Uh, Mike Peters joining me here on the show. All right, so that brings us back to the question you were going to just voluntarily answer in the past or uh, just a couple minutes ago, which was the fact that, you know, th- there has to be a wide percentage of folks who are literally cringing at the fact or thought of working with their spouse every day, let alone let alone spending the majority of like every waking minute with them. So, you know, did it or or has it gotten contentious on the road with you guys or at least when you had started out? Uh, Greg, when we started out, my wife was in management training for a furniture store, and we knew we, that we were going to take a move. We were going to move someplace and I was looking at the barbecue tour just for myself. I could go and come home. It wouldn't matter where we lived. Uh, the economy was just going south. She said, hey, I'll quit my job. I was a manager of a bank. It was two chiefs, no Indians. And our first <laughs> run on the road, we were out for eight straight weeks. And the sixth weekend, we were in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, tornado night. And it was just a interesting weekend at a rib fest. So the music was like a 100-plus decibels, and we're trying to do our thing. And... Uh, we, we sat down at the end of the event and said, we're either going to make this work or we're going to go our separate ways. It, it just wow. it didn't work out. I mean, it was it was bad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you remember those events. You remember those days. And uh, so from that point, it really has been like a honeymoon. Um, April 7th, we celebrated 29 years of marriage together. So, I mean, it's I think that's that's part of it, too. She's she can't train anybody else. And. By God, I'm I'm I, I love her so. <laughs> That's kind. Of, it sounds like a match made in heaven. And remember, as I always say on the show, happy wife, happy life, right, Mike? You you got that right. damn right. All right, so you've been doing this for a number of years now, Mike. What changes have you seen over the years in regards to the popularity of the tour? Are you seeing more people come out each and every year? Has it hit any type of a peak? How are you seeing it as as the guys hosting it? I, I think we're still seeing the 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 tremendous uh, appreciation of the events that we go to. Um, Going down to Somerville, it was great. Normally, we don't typically go to a first-year event. We go to the established ones that we know there's going to be a a crowd. We know that there's going to be the traffic for it. Um, It was great. Some of those, it's it's just the appreciation of having the tour that KCBS and somebody bigger is – is recognizing their efforts at their event. Um, rarely do we go to events that we don't get that. And so I think it's it's a great tool for KCBS to help promote barbecue and promote the pursuit of barbecue and promote the advancement of barbecue and to promote these events and organizations that are, it's all volunteer, or most all of it is volunteer organizations that are putting on these events. So to show them some love is is great, and if they have a whole bunch of people, that's even better. Mike Peters joining me here on the show. Uh, Mike, you mentioned that a lot of people ask you about uh, the ribs question. Is that the most common question you're getting, or is there other questions that you field on a more regular basis? 
You know, with because we use the Big Green Egg and the the pork between both Farmland and Smithfield are our main sponsors. We cook a lot of pork, and uh, I roll my ribs. I put them up on the top rack, and it's it's a beautiful presentation. A lot of people, a lot of people can cook ribs in their on their back deck, and so. A, I would say that the rib question is probably the the biggest one. We're doing our version of a bacon explosion this year, so uh, I already talked to uh, Jason and got his blessing on uh, using the name. We're going to see him this weekend here in uh, Springfield, but we're we're doing our version of that and trying to tie some things together that um, make it fun for people to smoke something on their on their deck. Do you think that General Jane and Joe Public are more knowledgeable at this stage of the game? than they were when you started with the barbecue tour a few years back? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have so many people who come up and ask us about barbecue pit masters. They watch that stuff, and they see what these guys are doing. There's so much information on the Internet anymore between YouTube and, and Google and everything else. You can find out so much stuff. And, and shows like yourself, Greg, it's a great forum for people to go to to get that information to, uh, to try to – better themselves and uh you know it's everybody loves it do you think that's helped attendance coming out to the barbecue tour the fact that they they do see barbecue on television and through youtube and a lot of these other various outlets i don't i don't know how much the tour increases attendance it depends on the events that promote it um bixby oklahoma a couple years ago we were there and and we were in their flyer we were on their radio ads they they really played up they they told their sponsors hey we're one of 20 events this year that got chosen out of 400 contests we're one of 20 to to be chosen this is a big deal it helped their local sponsorship monies and hopefully it it helped their attendance I, i don't know whether you can put a number on what what we what we bring to an event uh, that as far as attendance wise. All right, so let me change it up here for a second, Mike. Uh, I think it's a well known fact that I, along with the Centralites, single handedly got you elected to the Kansas City Barbecue Society Board of Directors. Uh, you have a few months in right now. Is it better, worse, or about what you expected when you decided to make that run last year? You know when. Uh... And I, I joke with Randy, and, and uh, Ray did said the same thing. What the <laughs> hell are you thinking? You know, um, the funniest story was Ed Roy. He caught me at um, the a, a drive up window at a Chinese place. I get a phone call from Ed. He said, "Hey, I heard you. You hit your head." I said, "Damn, what are you talking about? I didn't hit my head. I had some stuff down in Lynchburg." He said, "I heard you're running for the board," and then just laughed his ass off. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's not been near as bad as as all the the hype was or the the pre expectations were. Um, it's a very diverse board of uh, individuals and opinions. I'm finding that out. Um, I think everybody wants everybody wants the organization to succeed and do well and do better and promote barbecue. I think as long as everybody takes that mindset back to everything they're doing um it can only it can only get better but no it, it's not near, near as bad as what i've uh, was led to believe yet yet all right uh, fair enough mike when will garnish be voted in as a mandatory rule and let me say for the fact that i have been a long proponent of doing it one way or the other voting it out altogether or voting it in uh, but i've even softened on that I still am baffled that it remains optional in its standing when we all know that if anybody's going to win a KCBS event, they're going to garnish a box. When do you think or why don't you think that there won't be some type of a rule change to say, hey, everybody has to do it? Um, that's a great question, Greg, and, and I, don't, I don't honestly know. I don't see garnish going away from the rules um, it's what helps make KCBS what KCBS is. I agree. And vote it in. Been. I agree exactly 100%. That's what sets it apart. So just vote it in, right? Uh, you know, maybe somebody will bring that as a motion to the board to make it mandatory. Um, probably not going to be me, though. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe somebody. But uh, at least, you know, over the years I'm softening just a little bit, so it gives me hope for the future. Um, Mike, where's the uh, barbecue tour going to be rolling into next? 
uh, Springfield, Missouri at Rockin' Ribs. This will be, I think, the 13th year of that event. It's a children's charity event. So they raise, give money back to about seven children's charity of the Ozarks. I topped a million dollars in uh, in money back, I believe, last year or the year before. So a, a great event, and the weather should be beautiful for it. Sounds like an absolutely spectacular event. Um Barbecue Pitmasters is going to be uh, on, I think, for a fifth season now starting in June. Um, ever tried out for that? Uh, have any interest in, in getting on Barbecue Pitmasters if they were to approach you? You know, they uh, they called us last year. We were in, I believe, Vegas for before the Mesquite Contest and had to cobble together a, uh, a video on the road, and uh, it, it just didn't turn out well. I Yeah, I think I'd love it. I, I'm... Uh, I'll I'll tell you what if you go and and I hate to to promote somebody else go ahead. other than you Greg but um I saw on Facebook that the Big Bite tour which is basically a mobile marketing tour kind of like us has barbecue pitmasters as one of their sponsors huh. and it really kind of kind of hacked me but I I'm we're going to be in Tryon North Carolina and the pitmasters guys will be there so uh we're going to go have a conversation and see what we can't do to either get them on next year or something Ooh, we'll leave it at that yeah. very vague and potentially intimidating uh mike <laughs> peters is the pit master of here piggy piggy also uh, you can catch him out with the great american barbecue tour with his wife chris mike great to meet you in person uh, this past march over there in miami oklahoma uh, continued success with the tour obviously and uh, thanks for coming out tonight i appreciate it yeah i appreciate it greg i'm just hoping for uh, better than 53rd place ribs uh, this weekend uh, fingers crossed you're on the show. So, I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to win the whole event, right? There we go. There we go. There you go. All right. Thanks for coming on tonight. There he is. Mike Peters of the uh, Great American Barbecue Tour and pitmaster of Here Piggy Piggy. I put my glass. Jesus Christ. I put my glass right in front of the thing. I couldn't see it at all. Couldn't see it at all. I don't remember if I talked about it or not. I bust his balls here a little bit. But he, uh, I was calling out awards in Miami, Oklahoma. I'm going to say Miami. I don't care if you like it or not. And uh, the mic went dead, wireless microphone, just for a few minutes. And just like clockwork, blurted it out. Uh, blurred out. Oh, just like Tuesday night. <laughs> and I threatened him with physical violence. And he quickly snapped two. Uh, but that's Mike Peters. Great American Barbecue Tour here, Piggy Piggy. Watch for him this weekend now. You better watch out. We'll show karma going on. Coming off a less than substantial rib performance in Miami, Oklahoma, as he said. Hey, you never know. Uh, folks, Mother's Day is coming up. Don't be, as a wise reverend once told me, don't be a douchebag. All right, don't do it. Go ahead and instead visit stephendefranco.com. That's right. Uh, Stephen is a barbecue jeweler to the stars. And uh, when I say stars, I mean uh, barbecue stars. That's us. Uh, there to help us out with every fit, form, or fashion that we could possibly have. Uh, if you need some help, if you need some fine, high-class jewelry, uh, Stephen is your guy. He's got watches up here. You got the diamonds. You got the jewelry here. You got the watches, of course. Clocks, gifts, and art. It's fabulous. You go to stephendefranco.com. And all you have to do is just kind of navigate through the website here, especially if you don't live in the greater Cleveland area. Uh, for here, you know, you're going to the two exist watches. Like, hey, uh, this is a cool watch. I want that one. And then you uh, punch it up. Go to the bigger image because you want to see big images. And uh, you say, hey, Steve, I saw this watch online, and I want to see how much it's going to cost. By the way, I'm a barbecue brother or sister. That's what you do. You call him on the phone, 440-943-2700. 440-943-2700. I mean, we're showing you watches here, but it doesn't have to be watches. It can be uh, any of the other jewelry that he has that you can view online. And then uh, once you ask for Steve specifically, tell me your barbecue brother. Tell me here the ads each and every week and uh, that you like it and that you're looking for the Barbecue Brother hookup. And he'll be more than happy to shave dollar bills off. There we go. A little diamond information for you guys. A little uh, subliminal advertising. 
Um, so here's what you do. 440-943-2700. Ask for Steve. Talk to him. Tell you what you want. He'll give you some great advice. He ships for free. Watches get the extended warranty. You get it engraved for free if you want. It's shipped, as always, for free. And you really can't go wrong when you're dealing with Stephen DeFranco and the good folks over at Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. It's a jeweler, not just a jewelry store. Let's make sure that we are all on board with that. And they do love better than anybody. It says it right there on the website. All right, uh, it's my guy, Stephen DeFranco, uh, 440-943-2700. Stephen DeFranco, D-I-F-R-A-N-C-O, Stephen DeFranco. Dot com for more information. All right, Ron, we'll come back. Your chance to win. What are we winning now? A one-year subscription to the National Barbecue News coming up. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm done. I'm the show. Let me get stuff away for no money. That's why it's free of charge. You can win stuff and I'll give it away for free. All right, your chance to win a one-year subscription to the National Barbecue News. That's right, periodical, website, uh, all-in-one, dedicated to the fun and fabulosity of barbecue, National Barbecue News. You can check it out, barbecue, B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E, B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E, news.com, barbecue news.com. Thanks to Cal Phelps for this one. And in the subject line, you uh, go ahead and write Mike Peters video. Mike Peters video. That sounds weird all in itself. For your chance to win a one-year subscription to the National Barbecue News. Good luck. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Those are the two ways to get in touch with me. Waiting for a winner here. Let's see what we got. All right. Looks like we got a winner. Drum roll, please. It is uh, Chris Mama. So, Chris, you will need to send me... Ah, shit. Yeah, send me your shipping info just in case. I want to make sure we do this right. And uh, I will make sure that we get that over to Cal, and he'll get you hooked up with the National Barbecue News free one-year subscription. Uh, please reference... Uh, National Barbecue News, Chris, and then we'll make sure that we uh, get that hooked up for you. Nice and right. All right, uh, joining me now, coming out of the bullpen, as we say, to help me close out the show, a uh, monthly guest and uh, a guy who I constantly say has one of the coolest jobs ever on the face of the earth. Friend of the show, Derek Riches, joining us. Derek, how are you, buddy? Good. How you doing, Greg? Uh, doing absolutely fabulous, Derek. Uh, appreciate you asking. And, uh, you know, before we get into some of the items that we were, like, scheduled to talk about, the last time that you were on, well, it took me three weeks to actually get a Father's Day review of the Grillbot for my dad, but nevertheless, it failed horribly. Uh, but thanks to you for bringing that up. Um, I think it was towards the end of our segment last month, you mentioned Black Olive Pellet Cooker. Is that correct? Yes. All right, so right. has there been like any further developments with that? Is it like out for sale? I did try and touch a base with them to see if they would come on the show and Maybe give me one for free. But I haven't heard anything else about that at this moment. Where does that state of uh, the, the black olive pellet cooker stay? Um, basically, everyone I've been able to get in touch with who's, who's actually tried one is actually in Canada. Um, oh. And it's a Canadian company that's producing them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, north of the border, I think. I, I haven't been able to get much out of uh, much action on it either. So, yeah. Um, uh, just kind of have to wait and see still. All right, so uh, we have a couple different items to talk about here tonight. And uh, the first one is the Broilmaster Independence Infrared Charcoal Grill. So, you know, as we're kind of laying out the title on this thing, everything seems to kind of just follow nicely along until, oh, you get to the end. And it says Charcoal Grill. So, <laughs> you know, typically I'm, I'm thinking as a general, you know, Joe Schmo, 
infrared grill. It's either that you know brick looking thing that takes up a little space so you could fit maybe one or two steaks on a grill, uh, or you have that uh, charbroil thing where the burner's underneath that like uh, concave metal type thing. How do you get infrared and charcoal all in the same sentence? Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, okay. You know, uh, several years ago, Tech came out with the uh, glass ceramic infrared yeah, grill, right. right? And they patented the use of that glass, which is made by a company called Schott, uh, for gas infrared grills. Well, apparently, Broilmaster figured out that they hadn't patented it for all grills, just gas grills. And so what they've done is they've, I mean, they're, they're a gas grill company. So um, they've... They, they've taken one of their gas grill bodies and they've modified it for a charcoal grill. They put big heavy vents on there and, and a big coal grate inside. So it's a standard charcoal grill, but as an extra option, you can get the glass uh, infrared diffusers to put over the charcoal fire, then put the cooking surface on, and now you can grill infrared over charcoal. Okay, so uh, great sounding cool sounding idea uh how does how does it work <laughs> how does it work in, in reality yes uh it works really well it's 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 like cooking on infrared uh it's like why would you bother making a charcoal mess in a grill when you can buy a, a gas infrared grill um i mean to me you know if you're gonna if you're cooking on charcoal, it's because you, you like the flavor, because you like the experience, because charcoal's great and it's better than gas and it's better than all this sort of stuff. And they basically come up with a way to kind of take most of that out of the experience uh, and charge you twelve hundred bucks to do it. Twelve hundred dollars for an infrared charcoal grill? Twelve hundred dollars? Oh my god, that seems like a substantial Oh, I was going to say ripoff. It seems like a very large amount of dollars. Yes, it is a substantial investment. Uh, yeah, and are you using the charcoal just to achieve, like, the really high temperature needed, or what? Well, your charcoal is your fuel source. Yeah. Just like, I mean, you know, in a, in a gas infrared grill, you have a gas burner that produces the heat. It, that heat is focused at an infrared diffuser, which strips out all the airflow and the convection and turns it to pure infrared in this way you're you've replaced the gas burner with burning charcoal so it basically is the same operation uh it's just a different fuel source and it's because tech didn't have a patent for an infrared charcoal grill how, how big is it like what kind of a, a meat capacity am i throwing on there if i want to infrared up for a party uh, it's well. It's, it's built into the standard Broilmaster uh, gas grill head, so it's comparable in, pri in size to a, uh, a Weber Genesis or pretty much any three burner gas grill. And from uh, left to right and top to bottom and back to front, it's a complete infrared cooking system. Uh, you can remove the diffuser plates, so I mean you could just cook on charcoal. But what they're offering is this, as as kind of this marketing effort, is this idea this diffuser plate and it is not all broilmaster options are you know optional i mean you buy the basic unit and then you start adding all the extras on there and so it's just it's to me it's pointless to buy the infrared diffuser plate and to just leave it as a standard charcoal grill i mean it's it's a moderately good charcoal grill i mean you could certainly save yourself a lot of money and get something um something better i mean strip completely stripped down this is nine hundred dollars just a broil master grill on itself is a, is nine hundred dollars just for the for the charcoal version of the broil master oh, grill really yeah wow. broil masters are pretty expensive but they are probably the most durable gas grills under several thousand dollars all right so i've i mean i've heard that on any number of occasions so definitely not gonna uh try and argue that point but I mean, it just seems like uh, all the way around a pretty expensive charcoal grill uh, with or without diffuser plates. Yeah. All right. Uh, w w is this something you would suggest to somebody just that they have the money to blow or, or what? Oh, no. I think there's a lot of lot better things to blow your money on. I, I just I don't necessarily get the point of it. All right. Well, good enough. So we move on from there. Uh, the next item that we were going to be talking about tonight is the Huntington 
three burner. Uh, this is coming from Lowe's. Is this like a, a branded for Lowe's type thing, or, or what, is this where you find it? Well, um, last year Lowe's picked up a, a Duquesne 4200, and they sold yeah. it for nearly like 40% off what the, the regular dealers were selling it for <laughs> and undercut it. But it was okay because Weber discontinued the brand entirely. So if they screwed the dealers, it was the last hurrah of the brand. So this year, Lowe's has picked this up. Now, what this really is, is the Broil, the Broil King Signet 70, which is actually sold in Europe, not the United States, but uh, fairly similar. So what this is, is, is actually a really good gas grill being sold at Lowe's for about $140 less than you would have paid for it anywhere else. So this is kind of my, like if you want a gas grill, you want something that's decent, that's going to last you a while, and you're looking in the three to $500 price range, this is it. I mean, there's there's no point in going anywhere else. If you can get it, get it. Is this similar in size again to what a, what a Weber Genesis would be then? Yeah, it's it's uh, completely comparable. It's uh, primary cooking area is 400 square inches. Uh, it's a four, 40,000 BTU gas grill. Comes with a 10,000 BTU, pretty much worthless side burner, but most people have side burners anyway, so it might as well be worthless. What, I mean, what was the deal? I mean, and they've been on for they've been on grills now for what like six or seven years, maybe even a little bit longer. What was the fascination with that real crappy side burner? Where people they think people are really going to saute and and make uh, sauces and all this other crap on it, or were they just going to use it as charcoal chimney lighters? Value added accessory uh-huh. is is the technical term for it. <laughs> uh, it is something that makes it different from the thing sitting next to it. It is that you know what for fifty fifty dollars more you can get it with the side burner, so you can heat up your barbecue sauce or you know cook up a pot of beans or something like that. Um, you know, side burners are great when your power's out or if you have an electric range or something like that. But, um, you know, um, most people don't use them. So I usually recommend save yourself some money and don't buy a side burner. But, you know, this is actually decent. This is a really good price grill, actually. So, All right. Uh, and that's the Huntington 3 burner from Lowe. So if you can find it, uh, Derek gives you the, the value pick of the month, if we can say it like that. Um, one of the other things here before we wrap up is this uh, general gas grill recommendations in regards to what consumer reports got wrong exactly what exactly does that mean well consumer reports is now in in the midst of unleashing its recommendations for the year um half of the grills they reviewed are from last year and not this year one of their top rated is actually discontinued um the problem is they have to go to press before they really know what's going to happen and they picked this year uh, the Weber Spirit SP320. Now, this is a, about a $500 gas grill from Weber. It's not very big. Um, my argument is that this is a deluxe version of it, and what they've done is they picked the shiny one. Now, Weber doesn't use, uh, for either the Spirit or the Genesis line, they don't use high-grade 304 stainless steel. They use lower-grade stainless steels, and they don't last in appearance for very long and so uh you know if you're reading consumer reports and someone comes along and says hey this is the grill to buy tell them no get the black one save yourself 50 bucks or even better save yourself 100 bucks and get the black one that doesn't have the side burner you're not going to use anyway <laughs> so that's kind of it and the, you know the interesting thing is what consumer reports has done is they've really kind of ranked up the price in the past they've kind of tried to stay in a three to four hundred dollar range but most of their top recommendations are now six, seven hundred bucks. Wow, uh, Derek Rich's BBQ dot about dot com is the website. You can find them in that uh, uh, a veritable cornucopia of barbecue and grilling knowledge over there. If you've never checked it out, uh, and you know people say it all the time that the grilling season is coming upon us. Uh, you know, if you're one of those people that kind of put it away, I guess around Halloween, and then you bring it out around Memorial Day. Uh, do you have any like basic tips for people that are thinking about getting it out this weekend over the next few weeks to make sure it's in tip-top shape? Uh, you know, if if you're using gas, like I always say, always check your fuel lines. Always make sure you don't have leaks. Uh, if you've packed it away for six months, I'm sure something has been chewing on something. So, uh, you know, give it a good check out. Fire it up well beforehand. 
I always get the person who writes me and says, hey, you know, guests are going to be here in 30 minutes and I can't get my grill lit. I'm like, well, you know what? Order pizza. Don't bug me. <laughs> get a charcoal grill as well and then never have to worry about your burners or gas lights. There's always, always, have already. always better to have more than less. That's what I always say. Yes, definitely. All right. Uh, anything that you're working on of uh, note that we're going to be talking about next month? Do you have the... I'm just looking at it now. Do you have the Weber smoking biscuits over your right-hand shoulder? Um, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> mm. Somebody... Kingsford, Kingsford things, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Kingsford <laughs> smoking biscuits. That's right. Sorry about that. St. Louis. I've used several of them, actually, so it's not a full bag. How how do they how are you finding them to work? Like that we we heard about that at the Kingsford Invitational, and I have not seen hide nor hair of those things. Uh, they're they're out. I did, you know by and large it's a mass market product, so it's trickling into grocery stores and wherever else is they can get it. Um, uh, I don't you know my argument was that Kingsford did an amazing job of coming up with a very consistent and clean charcoal. That does not exactly provide a tremendous amount of flavor to your cooking. And so now they they come up with what are flavor pills. You know, it, it's it's like those little the the juice things you squirt in your water. Yeah. Mio. Flavor. Well, that's what this is. This is this is smoke flavor things that you throw in your in your very clean, very nice charcoal to provide yourself with a somewhat more realistic Cook out, cook out experience. There you go. They it's... do provide flavor. They do work fairly well. But what I found is that they last about fifteen minutes. Wow. Uh, well, you know, if you want mio for your charcoal cooker, then you know, have a look at those uh, Weber smoking packets or whatever they call them. Uh, you yeah. can find Derek Riches at bbq.about.com. That's bbq.about.com, and you can find him here on the show once a month. Derek, always appreciate the time. We'll look for you again in May, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, it's good to talk to you. All right, Derek, take care. There he is. Derek Riches, bbq.about.com if you want to check him out. If you've really never checked out that site, you're doing yourself a disservice. It has got just a huge amount of information, and uh, you should be checking it out very quickly. Sooner than later. All right, uh, quick, one more read here, folks, and then one more giveaway before we wrap it up tonight. Uh, coming up out of the break, a $10 gift card from the thebbqsuperstore.com. That's the bbqsuperstore.com. Uh, we talk about it all the time, folks. If you're going to go online, you want to be safe, you want to be careful. A lot of people have been screwed on the Internet before, and that's why you want to deal with somebody that's reputable. You want to be taken advantage of again and again and again. That Internet grip starts to set in. The hands start to sweat. Your neck tightens up. We've said it before. You've been screwed on the Internet, and this is your hard-earned money. Feel confident. You're dealing with honest and fair people. Good news, folks. Uh, the gang over at Tasty Lick Barbecue Supply here to ease your internet buying stresses. One of the most complete inventories of barbecue and grilling items anywhere on the face of the earth. All of the items that you see on the website are in stock, ready to ship to you directly. Tasty Licks carries grills, smokers, ceramic cookers, electric cookers, various charcoal types, wood chunks, chips, cookbooks, accessories. If they don't have it, you don't need it. And on top of all of that, Fred carries many of the other show sponsors in his store as well. So you're doing like this two-for-one, shopping at a sponsor, buying a sponsor's products, best of, both, best, of both, best of both worlds. And don't forget, Tasty Licks, they have their own line of rubs and sauces as well, doing very well in the competition circuit. Be sure to try those. So head on over to Tasty Licks Barbecue. It's the place I get all of my barbecue supplies. I'm not kidding. You should try and go there as well. Trusted online retailer, proud sponsor of this show for a number of years. Let Fred know you listen to this show. You hear a spots live every Tuesday. Again, it's tastylicksbbq.com. That's tastylicksbbq.com. And if you're a competitor, you know, Fred gets out every once in a while. You know, watch. Might sneak up on you and then kick your ass for you. All right, uh, your chance to win a $10 gift card coming right up. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now's the time on the show where we give stuff away, yeah. It's free and you don't have to pay a thing, that's why it's free, yeah. All right, last gift for this evening for free, a $10 gift card from thebbqsuperstore.com. Thanks to Richard Parker and the folks over at thebbqsuperstore.com. And an email 
Send me this, DerekRichesBBQ.About.com. DerekRichesBBQ.About.com. You have to spell Derek's name right. I will watch for that. I'm a stickler for spelling. For your chance to win a $10 gift card from the BBQSuperstore.com. Good luck. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, we have a winner. And his name is Neil Platt. Neil! A $10 gift card. Uh, You don't need to send me anything. I just need your email address, which I have. I will get that over to Richard Parker, and we will all be set. Fabulous fun, live, local, late-breaking. Thanks to Derek Riches for joining me this past segment and talking about all the good stuff that he has been working on. Uh, $1,200 infrared gas grill, a charcoal grill. I don't want to sound like a cheap ass, but i got a tough time paying $1,200 for a lot of things. Except hookers and blow. Then I'm in. All right, let's uh, rewind all the way back to the first hour. Young man, up and comer to the industry, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, join me. Talk about a number of items. If you miss the show, get it in podcast fashion. It'll also be on the YouTube. It'll also be on Outdoor Cooking Channel. Maybe you're streaming live on Roku. Prove it. Second hour, Mike Peters sits on the KCBS Board of Directors, which I got voted into, along with the Central Lights. Also, he is the uh, director of the Great American Barbecue Tour, both him and his wife, Chris Peters, out there, doing it every weekend, showing you the right way to do it at various locations across the country, and helping me close the show tonight. Derek Riches, bbq.about.com, going over the uh, Broil Master Infrared, and the Three Burger Cheap uh, Value Pick of the Week at Lowe's, and uh, covering a few different items as well, like those Weber Smoky Biscuits. Smoky Biscuits? I think it's point of phrase. Um... Raw cast iron seasoned each and every time for generations of rust free service. Uh, September 11th, 2001. This is so Pippi. I will not be denied my clothes. I will not be denied my clothes. Uh, September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. Uh, I will see you back here next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.